Hey guys, secure remote access is one of the most debated topics, but a few years ago, Cloudflare made it a lot easier for the average user by implementing a free zero trust network where you can configure Cloudflare tunnels with no port forwarding and a pretty easy setup process. The problem is there are more and less secure ways of configuring a Cloudflare tunnel. If you just set it up on a LAN network, Cloudflare will have unrestricted access to all devices on that network, which isn't ideal. So in this tutorial, we're gonna look at how to configure Cloudflare tunnels securely, utilizing a unified cloud gateway and an isolated VLAN on a DMZ. But realistically, this process will work for just about any firewall, assuming that you're able to configure VLANs and firewall rules. This will allow us to configure the Cloudflare tunnel and limit access to our applications on the Cloudflare side, but also limit what the Cloudflare tunnel can access by utilizing firewall rules on our local network. So I think the first question to answer is why you would use a zero trust network rather than something like a VPN. And the truth is that if you're an individual user, a VPN might be best, but there are a lot of benefits that a zero trust network provides. For example, zero trust networks are designed around the principle of least privilege. So rather than connecting to a VPN and having access to whatever that VPN allows, individual access is configured. With this setup, you can't access anything other than what you explicitly configure on the Cloudflare side using access policies and then locally using our firewall rules. This allows you to access specific services on devices rather than whole devices, which limits the attack surface. And in a worst case scenario where a device is compromised externally, Using the Cloudflare tunnel itself, it's very difficult for the attacker to move laterally across your network. So let's look at how you can configure this. Now, unfortunately, at this point, we are starting off after I have already configured the Zero Trust network. So I have a video that goes over that entire process. Unfortunately, I don't have another domain and I have so many of them, I don't really wanna buy another one right now. But I have a video, it's the exact same process. So you basically just have to buy your own domain and then you have to configure the Zero Trust network and you do have to add a credit card, though everything that we will be doing today is free. So that is the point we are at right now. So in the network section, you're gonna see this tunnels tab. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a tunnel. And the way that you can do that is in the network section, you can select tunnels and then you can add a tunnel and we are gonna be using Cloudflare. So we'll give it a name, save the tunnel. And then this is where you can go in and select which operating system you wanna run this on. We are gonna run it on Docker. Now at this point, this is where kind of everything from a security perspective sometimes goes off the rails. So what people do is they take this and then they go onto their Docker server and they just run the Docker container. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but the way that you have to look at it is that wherever you run this, technically Cloudflare will have permission to access everything that that Docker server can access. So our goal here is that we wanna limit this. We wanna limit this so that we control on our side, meaning on our firewall side, exactly what Cloudflare can access. And the way we're gonna do that is by utilizing a VLAN. So inside of my Unify setup, I'm gonna create a new VLAN. I'm gonna call it Cloudflare. And then you can use whatever IP address and VLAN ID you wanna use. I'm just gonna leave this as default and we are gonna add it. So at this point, our VLAN is created, and now we have to segregate our network. So this is super easy using Unify's zone-based firewall. And I am going to utilize the DMZ zone. Now, if you're exposing other services externally and you're using this DMZ zone, it's probably not a good idea to use this. You'll be better off creating a different zone and then isolating this as well. But if you're not using the DMZ, this is a great way to ensure that overall this is going to be completely isolated. So I'm gonna click into there and then I'm going to add Cloudflare. Now with Cloudflare here, what this is gonna allow us to do is it's going to allow us to create firewall rules, basically pointing to our internal devices, but only on the ports that we specify. So to show you how this is gonna work, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the DMZ and then we are going to select the DMZ and the internal. And basically this is gonna be where we're gonna create all of our firewall rules. So we're gonna switch over to the server side now, but we're gonna bounce back here in a second. So for testing purposes, I'm gonna be using a 
virtual machine. Now, I would recommend that you do this with a separate physical device so that you have physical separation. I'm only doing this for the tutorial. But realistically, the Cloudflare tunnel can run on anything that you have that runs Docker. So not necessarily the way you should do it, so keep that in mind. Okay, so on the Cloudflare side, we're gonna bounce back to this, and then we are going to copy this Docker run command. So I SSH'd into that device, and there's one thing that I changed. I changed and added this restart is equal to always, because if you don't do that, every single time your system reboots, it will not connect back up. So this will ensure that stays connected. So we are going to configure this, and if we head back to the Cloudflare side, you will see that we are connected. So we can click next, and this is where you can start to create either public host names or private networks. So private networks are actually pretty powerful because it allows you to basically customize exactly what can and cannot be accessed, unlike a traditional VPN. This will function kind of like a VPN where you have to install the warp client on like your phone, for example, and then the warp client would only be able to access exactly what you specify here, as well as in your Unify firewall rules or just your firewall rules. For now, we're just gonna expose Proxmox, which is an absolutely terrible idea, but that's what we're gonna do. So it's gonna be proxmox.wondertech.net, and it's gonna be HTTPS, and then this is the IP address and port. The only thing we're gonna do is we are gonna uncheck this TLS verify because I do not have a certificate, and we want to ignore that. So we're gonna save this. So if we try and access it, what you're gonna see is that it's not gonna work. This will never load. So the reason for that is because the system that we set up with the Cloudflare tunnel is on an isolated DMZ. That isolated DMZ does not have access to anything. So what we have to do at this point is we have to punch a hole in our firewall to allow that DMZ network, realistically that device actually, that device to be able to access Proxmox but only on that port. So this is what will eventually appear. So back to our firewall. So the system is on the internal VLAN. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a policy and we're gonna say that in the zone DMZ, the server that I'm using for that Cloudflare tunnel is allowed to access this specific IP, but only using this specific port. So this is the firewall rule. We can limit it to IPv4 and TCP, but realistically, we're just saying that this Ubuntu server can access this IP address on this specific port. And if we add that policy, and now we come here and we refresh this, what you'll see is that we are brought to the login page. So this did not work until we created that firewall rule. And that's why this is secure. Because at this point, we're basically saying Cloudflare cannot access anything unless we explicitly approve it. And we approve it by creating that firewall rule. So if we go back to Cloudflare, we can modify this a little further. So at this point, we have no authentication on the Cloudflare side. We're only managing this on the firewall rule side inside of our local network. So what we can do is we can create access rules. So inside of the access tab in policies, I created a new policy and this policy is very basic. It basically says that email addresses ending in wondertech.net are allowed to access this service. The only other thing you can modify is the session duration, but realistically there are other things you can do. Country would be a big one if you wanted to limit access to a specific country for a service. Emails would be for individual email addresses. That's very powerful as well. But realistically, you can kind of customize this a lot. For now, this is all we're gonna do. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna save this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an application. So we're gonna add an application. It's a self-hosted application and we're gonna call this Proxmox. Then we're gonna select an existing policy, which is our email policy. And then we are gonna scroll down and we're gonna to go to the next tab. I forgot to add the public host name, that would be helpful. So it's proxmox.wondertech.net. And again, we have our access policy, so we are gonna click next. We don't have to modify any of this, you can if you want to, but overall, we're just gonna save this. So now let's come back to this. So if we go to this page again, we're gonna get a login page. 
So after inputting my email address, I am going to get a code. Now, if you put an email address that is not ending in at wondertech.net, you will not get the email. It doesn't tell you, it just doesn't send it. So that is the code, we can sign in. And then at this point, we will be brought to our service. So how can we take this one step further from a security perspective? So the benefit of Unify Cloud Gateways is that they're very, very easy to implement and use. So as you could see with this one zone that we just created a VLAN, we added it to the zone, and then we created a firewall rule. We punched a hole in our firewall that allowed us to access that one service. Realistically, you can do that for every single one of your services. And I'd recommend doing it this way to ensure from a security perspective that Cloudflare can only access the IP address and the port that you specified, and it cannot access anything more. But with that said, you could take this one step further and you can use intrusion detection and prevention. So I just did a video on Unify Security and there's a lot that you can do on this side. I'll leave a pop up to that video now. That will give you a overall guideline on exactly how you can follow and use some best practices to ensure that everything is set up optimally from a security perspective. But since I have IDS and IPS turned on, you can see intrusion prevention is on, it's set to notify and block. The only thing I have to do is add that VLAN to this list. And then at this point, that traffic is being monitored. Now, Cloudflare tunnels have changed a lot, so much so that it took me a little while to kind of figure out exactly where everything is, because I haven't used it in like six to eight months. But there's a lot, lot, lot that you can do here. The only thing I'll say is that the two sections you'll probably be in the most are going to be this application section after you create your policy and then the tunnel itself. So after you create your tunnel, you can come in here and add multiple public host names as well as the private network. So the private network is an interesting one because it's gonna function very, very similarly to a VPN. So I basically set this up to just walk through exactly how it would work. So what you'll see here is that I configured a private network and I set it to just be my LAN subnet. So that's the very first thing you would do. You would set up a subnet or you would set up an IP address and then that would allow you to go in and use it using the Cloudflare Warp application, which we're gonna talk about in a second. But there is a few different steps that need to be set up here. So the very first thing you need to do is inside of your tunnel, you need to set up a private network. As soon as you do that, you can go into the route section and you'll see that it has been added here. But more importantly, you're gonna to have to go into settings and then you're gonna to have to go into network and you have to make sure proxy is enabled. With proxy enabled, you can go back and inside of the warp client section, you have to make a few changes here. So the very first thing you have to do is enable the device enrollment permission. So you click manage here and then you're just gonna add your policy. So I added the same policy that we created earlier, which is in essence saying that any emails ending in wondertech.net. So with the Warp client, you will be able to authenticate to this tunnel using this specific policy. Next, if you scroll down, you're gonna see this default policy. So if I edit this, what you will see is that there are a few things I changed inside of here. So this is gonna use WireGuard, et cetera. You can modify any of this, but the big key here is that we have to configure split tunnels. So we are going to include IPs and domains, and then in the manage section here, you can see what I added. And I just added an individual IP address. So in essence, what we're saying is that we're enabling the entire subnet, but for my split tunnel as of right now, I'm only allowing this one IP address. And the next thing that you do is you download the warp client on your phone, you would then go into the Warp client, you would authenticate using your Zero Trust Network name and then whatever access policy you configured, so in our case, it's emails ending in wondertech.net, you would authenticate and then technically you would be able to access this IP address. So that then begs the question, why would you use this as opposed to a VPN? And that's where it gets a little tougher. So traditionally with a VPN, what you're doing is you're saying that a specific client device can connect to the VPN and it can access whatever that VPN allows 
from a firewall rule perspective. So you can go in and limit individual clients down using firewall rules, and then that would determine exactly what they can and cannot access. And you could do that uniquely for each of your clients if you really wanted to, especially with ubiquity stuff because you set a static IP address for each client. You can do that. However, there are benefits to this as well. And the very first one that you have to think through is that for managing VPN clients, you generally have to manage the client. So what you're doing is you're sending out, if you're using OpenVPN, you're sending out a configuration file. If you're using WireGuard, you're sending out that peer configuration file that they have to use. Then at that point, they're connecting to it. You have to use port forwarding. There's also potential performance issues. So depending on where the user is in the world compared to where the VPN server is, performance could degrade. So the further away you go from it, the worse the performance is going to be. Now compare that to something like the Cloudflare global network. Really what you're saying is that Cloudflare itself is creating a secure tunnel back to your local location. However, there are Cloudflare data centers all over the world. So Cloudflare edge data centers will determine exactly where you're going to be connecting to. And then at that point, the performance is going to be better. Not only that, but from a actual setup and management perspective, if you had a team of users, for example, and that team had specific resources they had to access, rather than going in, creating a VPN client for that user, assigning that VPN client then to specific firewall rules to ensure that they can and cannot access exactly what you want them to, this is a little different. So of course, you have to go through and create the firewall rules the same way we did earlier. However, you can go in and create different access policies. So if you have a team of users, you can in essence say that this specific user can access these resources and this user can access these resources. So really what you're doing at that point is you're managing all of the permissions on the Cloudflare side. It's a lot easier, especially when you take into consideration that you use things like single sign-on. So overall, the management and potential security is drastically better mainly because you're limiting down exactly what users can access. It's kind of a least permissive approach. Next would be logging. So there are logs with VPN servers as well, but with Cloudflare, there's a ton of logs. You can see basically exactly what every single client is connecting to. So in terms of that side of it, Cloudflare kind of wins out, but this would be great if the client application, meaning the Cloudflare Warp application, worked as well as WireGuard or OpenVPN. And I'm here to say right now it doesn't. So unfortunately, I had a lot of problems with the Cloudflare Warp client. However, I had those problems on Android. If you're an iOS user, chances are you might be fine. If you're connecting from a device, chances are you're gonna be fine. However, that quote unquote VPN, and I say VPN, but it's not really a VPN, is not nearly as reliable as my WireGuard VPN has been. I had problems with it. I've been using it to see if it is potentially something that you could use to replace WireGuard or OpenVPN right now. And while there are clear benefits to it, there are clear downsides as well. And the Cloudflare Warp client is one of them. If they ever improve that, I could see this being something that could potentially replace a VPN one day because again, no port forwarding, nothing you really need to manage. Overall, you can define very, very granular access policies and stuff like this while possible with a VPN is generally not how VPNs are managed. Generally, you will connect to the VPN and whatever the VPN server allows, you will have access to. So that is the private network portion, probably something that you're not realistically gonna use, but if you are interested in it, that is how it works. Now, as I mentioned in my last video, security is a moving target. But realistically, this is a pretty secure way of handling things. There's no port forwarding. You're limiting everything on the Cloudflare side from a firewall perspective, meaning locally. You're managing access inside of Cloudflare itself. And then you're getting all the enhancements and security benefits that Cloudflare provides as well. So there's kind of two layers here. You have Cloudflare protection, you have the firewall protection, but with the firewall protection, you have IDS and IPS. So this is one way of doing it. I'm sure there are many other ways of doing it, but this is the way that I found to be easiest. Hoping that this video helped you out. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.